Looks like I win again today. <laughs> this is the eighth time in a row. You're too trash at this game. <laughs> Cut it out, Cody. What's gotten into you? It's only been three days since it came out. I mean, to play this much in such a short time. You really have nothing else to do, huh? In order to beat you, I stayed up all night last night practicing. <laughs> this is the result of my hard work. <laughs> what the heck, dude? <laughs> it's like you have a vendetta against me or something. Well, yeah. It sucks losing three times in a row before. That was my first time having that happen. Being beaten by you like that was humiliating. Yeah, but if you keep on living like this, it'll ruin your grades. You're still a student, right? Huh? How do you know I'm a student? I can tell that you're young by the way you talk. Wow, that's kinda scary. <laughs> but I have my voice off during games, so I've never spoken. So, how can you tell just by how I type? Creepy. Well, I mean, it's hard to tell if it's just from the game chat. But I can tell by what you say, and how you use emojis. After a week of texting you, I feel like I got a rough age guesstimate. I feel like I messed up. I never thought I showed my age through the way I text, but... You're like a detective. Jack, the private eye. Anyway, age doesn't matter in gaming. Hmm... Well, yeah, I guess that's true. But if you tank your grades playing games all day, you might drop out of school too. Be careful. It's fine. I'm still forced to go to school, so it's not like I'm going to drop out. Wait. You're not in elementary school, are you? Surely you must be at least in middle school. Yep. So you're still growing in everything. Get some proper sleep, then. Hey, I usually get plenty of sleep. Don't talk like you're my mom. Wow. A middle schooler talking to me like that. Kids these days. I feel like a grandpa or something. This is depressing. Even though I've lived twice as long as you, I lost eight times. How old are you, grandpa? I'm not that old. Jeez, I guess I'm the only one who can tell how old someone is by the way they text. You said it yourself. <laughs> 29. Oh, he actually said it. By the way you talked, I figured you were in your early 20s or something. I don't think you're much smarter than me. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, at this age, I think I have a handicap with gaming. Huh. I don't think so at all. Who are you kidding? 29 is still pretty young in the grand scheme of things. Plus, being old enough to do whatever you want is cool. When I become a frail old man like you, I want to still be playing games. I'm depressed again because you're more adult than I am. Aww, Grandpa's sad. But you were surprised with how old I was, right? So I mean, it's fine, if you end up not wanting to play games with me anymore because of that. I don't mind. Even though you're really good, you were nice to a beginner. That's pretty rare for online games. It's fun playing together. So that's why we're talking like this, outside the game and all. Man, you're a good kid. This old grandpa might just start crying. You want some candy? Ew, no, I don't. My mom told me not to take candy from creepy old strangers. Some in-game items would be nice, though. Will you buy some for me? I take back what I just said, you brat. Oops, he's mad! <laughs> Alright, let's play one more time. I'll make a room. Join it in, like, five minutes. I'm going to destroy you this time. I'll show you the cruel reality of the world. <laughs> this is that moment you always see in movies, where the challenger gets shot down. You gonna be okay, Grandpa? 
Don't say that. Get ready to face the true nature of a grandpa. Hey, you. We haven't been playing at all lately, but how have you been? You must be busy with high school. My bad, my bad. There's been a lot going on lately, so I haven't had time for games. Don't tell me you're failing classes because of video games. I've always told you to keep up with your studies. They're not bad. <laughs> By the way, if we play today, I'm free. Let's play that new game you were talking about the other day. You sure that's okay? Don't overdo it. I said it's fine. Hurry up. Damn it. I got completely owned. You destroyed me. <laughs> this hurts. Grandpa still got it, eh? That was some sick gameplay, huh? Well, I've been playing a lot while you've been gone, so there's no way I'd lose. <laughs> so, what are you gonna do? You want revenge? Nah, that's okay. Losing sucks, but I had a lot of fun. There is something I want to tell you though, Grandpa. I'm glad we were able to play games together until the end. Huh? What do you mean? Until the end? I mean it. Thanks, Grandpa. Actually, to be honest, I can't play games with you anymore. What? Why? It turns out I have an incurable disease. I found out not that long ago. I was told I may not live long. What are you talking about? This is a joke, right? Nope, I'm being serious. My health has been getting worse for years, and now I'll be getting surgery. But apparently, my body might not be able to make it through surgery. So, basically, this might be the end for me. Thanks for being a good friend to me. Hang on, kid. This is so out of nowhere, I'm not following. I'm saying that I might not be able to play games with you anymore. I wanted to say my goodbyes to you today. No, uh, no, but... If the surgery goes well, your body will recover, right? Don't talk like it's already over. Well, yeah, but... I'm so tired of fighting this disease. The next time I'm hospitalized, I may not be able to leave again. When I think about that, I lose all my motivation. I can't change the inevitable, so I might as well accept it. Why are you talking so negatively? It's not like you. If there's anyone who can get through this, it's you. Come on, dude. I bet it's hard, but keep on pushing. It's not like you. What do you even know about me? I'm the one who's going through brutal treatments and dealing with all this pain. If you don't know this pain, then don't talk like you know everything. I'm sorry. That wasn't cool of me. Sorry, man. I shouldn't have said that. Ugh! I really wanted my last days to be messing around laughing with you. The vibe shouldn't be like this. No, it was really my bad. I was being thoughtless. You're right. You're the one in pain. I shouldn't have tried to pretend like I knew anything about what you're going through. It sounds like anyone would be doubting themselves. But still, I want you to listen to this. I never really talked much about myself. There was a reason for that. I am actually... a shut-in. I stopped showing up to my classes in middle school, and I somehow managed to graduate high school by getting my GED, but... I left home, got my own apartment, taught myself programming, and now I only ever leave my place in the dead of night to get something to eat. I haven't spoken to my parents in years. I pitied myself for spending all my good years like that. Every day I wondered what the purpose of me living was. I think it got like this because I've always run away from difficult things. I've done nothing but run away my whole life. But you, you're different. Cody, 
You're a real put-together guy. I'm past 30, and all I do is play games, so I'm obviously the loser here. But despite all that, you didn't make fun of me or look down on me, and you treated me fairly. Even as friends. That kind of thing doesn't usually happen, right? I think you can really face your disease and fight it. I think you have that kind of strength. If you're not going to do it for yourself, at least do it for the people who care about you. Like me. This again, huh? That's just the assumption a grandpa like you would make. Sorry. But I can't give up on the life of my only friend. I'm begging you, Cody. Try to fight your disease one more time. Okay, well... On one condition. It's not fair if I'm the only one giving it my all. You need to try hard somehow. Try hard with... What? Right, well... I want you to do something, like leave your house or talk to your parents. If you can't even do that, I don't think I'll be able to give it my all to fight through this disease. Um, I don't know about that. To be honest... Ah, screw it. Alright. If I do that, you promise to try and do the surgery? I will. When you get outside and face your family. You have yourself a deal, my little friend. I think it'll be impossible for me, but... Whatever, it's fine. At least we're facing difficult things together, right? Just don't forget about me if anything happens, okay? Cody! I did it! Did what? I left my apartment and went to go speak with my family. No way! You really did it? Although it took me like four hours of pacing back and forth before I did. I was so nervous that I was drenched in sweat. What did you guys talk about? Stuff like, hey, how are you? It was short, but conversation is conversation. Wow, you really did it. Congratulations. That's great. You guys hadn't spoken in years, right? Yeah, eight years. Eight years? I was so nervous that I almost threw up, and my hands are still shaking. But this sense of accomplishment is really great. My mom seemed pretty happy, too. Wow. I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. Now then. It's time for you to fulfill your promise. But. No buts. A man doesn't go back on what he says. Time to kick that disease's ass. Uh. Fine. I got it. This old grandpa over here is always waiting, okay? You can't leave me all beaten up, right? When you get better, let's play again. You got that? Thanks, Grandpa. Hurry up and get better so I can wreck you and send you back to the lobby. I'll... I'll show you. I'm home. My surgery was a success, you filthy old man. Cody? Is it really you? Grandpa, have you gone full senile? Obviously it's me. He really came back. I was worried sick. Are you okay? How did it go? The cut still hurts, but I'm okay enough to use my phone. Anyway, everyone said I got through the first stage. I basically just have to keep taking drugs and hope I don't get some other disease. This surgery was just repairing the original damage caused by my disease. It's not like I'm cured of the disease itself or anything. But... I did it. It was a long fight, huh? But you're okay. And I'll be fighting alongside you. What do you mean by fighting? I had been thinking about what I could do to help you keep your motivation and keep receiving treatment. Like last time when we faced our trials together. I thought maybe I could get you motivated again. What are you talking about? I have to do something again? 
Of course. After all, you're not cured yet. We came all this way, so the goal is complete recovery. That's ridiculous. I did what I had to. I don't want to do more work on top of it. It'd be a waste to stop here, after getting through surgery and everything. I feel like I have to ask. What are you going to be working towards? If it's just some average thing, we won't be able to balance each other out. I know that. I thought about a lot of things, but I've decided to start job hunting. Like an IRL actual job. Huh? What? But you've been holed up for years. You think you'll be able to find a job even though you've been sitting at a computer for work this whole time? You never talk to a soul. How are you going to get a real job? If I can't do that, then we won't be even. Although, obviously, my struggle is nothing like yours. But I figured the biggest hurdle for me would be a real job. I want to try, anyway. Apparently, there is a service for shut-ins like me who are trying to get a job. So, I think I'll use that for now. It's not like I don't have any work experience at all, so I've already got that going for me. Anyway, I already reached out to them. Seriously? Look at you, Grandpa, making moves. You're totally pumped right now. I'm just that desperate. Plus, I know that I gotta put in effort to get you motivated, too. If you weren't here, I'd be in trouble. Cut it out, weirdo. You mean you'd be lonely without me? I'm your only friend, right, Grandpa? You say lonely, I say in trouble. But honestly, I'd miss beating down on someone as hard as I do to you. So that's it. I knew it. Oh. What happened? Are you alright? Don't make me laugh. It hurts. Oh yeah? Sorry about that. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I'm going to end up dropping dead because you say whatever you feel like. Yeah, because you threw my life out of order. If you go and drop dead, I won't forgive you. So whatever you do, don't give up. Hey, old man. I got a checkup at the hospital today. The result? Almost a full recovery. <laughs> Yay! OMG! That's incredible! I know, right? You're not crying by chance, are you? <laughs> I wasn't crying. I was just a little surprised, that's all. Alright then. Complete recovery, huh? That's great. You really gave it your all. You're totally crying right now, Grandpa. That's hilarious. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. When you get older, you cry more easily. It's painful for other people to see me cry like this. Are you at work? It's a hospital reception job, right? Yeah, I'm a receptionist. I am still just a part-timer, though. How has work been? At first, even commuting to work was hard, but I'm kind of used to it now. This old grandpa is a receptionist. Amazing, right? I was terrible at talking to people, but since I wanted to change myself, I got surprisingly into it. You're working really hard, huh, grandpa? It's part-time now, but you said they'll make you full-time eventually, right? You've really kept it going for a year. Considering that you fought a hundred times harder than me, I have nothing else to do but to try hard. Thanks, Grandpa. If you weren't there, I don't think I could have gotten this far. I owe you my life. What are you on about? This is unlike you. You're the one who saved me in the first place. You gave me a chance to change. Thank you, Cody. I really mean it when I say you saved my life. You're welcome. Give me something to celebrate my full recovery. Wow, you really are that kind of person. Let's play tonight. I'll beat you real hard again. No, no. You're the one that's going to get beaten, Grandpa. <laughs> I beat death. Beating a frail old man like you is a walk in the park. 
You'll be in trouble if you look down on me. Don't underestimate the power of a man who rejoins society. I'll completely wreck you. Tonight at 8, the battle begins. After that, Cody's disease never came back. Apparently, even the doctors were amazed at his miraculous recovery. Cody will be entering senior year soon. It seems he's going on field trips and joining in on PE activities like everyone else. Up until now, he's never done any of those things. I think it's his perseverance that beat his disease. He's a tough kid. That forward-facing Cody finally started thinking about his future and will go on to become a game designer. I asked him why he didn't become a doctor or something. But that's just how Cody is, I guess. I want him to choose the path that he likes anyway. I'll be happy as long as he is. Switching gears to my life. In order to start doing more specialized work, I got some medical qualifications. Because of that, I was able to become a full-time employee. Since I spent so much time holed up in my room, getting used to working was hard. But now that I'm working, I have an overwhelming feeling of satisfaction that I never got to experience when I was a shut-in. Cody and I have been crazy busy with everything that's been going on in our lives, but now we enjoy playing games together once a week. I'm sure we'll become even better friends from here on out. Samantha, dear, we really need to talk. Oh, Jean, look, is this really important because I'm kind of busy at the moment? Busy doing what? Filing your nails? Huh? As your mother-in-law, you need to listen to me when I talk to you. Whenever I have something to say, it's always important, okay? What? Ugh, oh, you're so hopeless. In fact, that's what I need to talk to you about. You simply aren't doing what you should be doing in order to be the perfect housewife for my son. He deserves only the best. And frankly, you're just not giving him that. Well, with all due respect, I'm not a housewife. I actually have a very important job that takes up a lot of my time and focus. Your son knew this when we first met, and it hasn't changed since then. Well, that's just wrong then, isn't it? The man should be the one to earn the money. Once you married Zane, you should have resigned from your job so that you could take care of the house and any children that come along. That's your only job in life now, okay? Of course I'll help you get adjusted to your new role. I know all of Zane's favorite things, so it only makes sense that I help out around the house and make sure that you're looking after my precious little boy properly. Look, Jean, I don't want to be rude right now, but there is no way that this is ever happening. I'm not going to quit my job just to be a stay-at-home wife who does the cooking and cleaning. I've worked hard to build my business from the ground up. I'm not about to throw that all away simply because of your outdated and, in all honesty, sexist beliefs. In case you hadn't noticed, women aren't just baby-making maids anymore. How dare you? I'll have you know that my son has told me everything about you and your so-called business. But the truth is that the company wouldn't have grown so much and started earning so much if it weren't for my Zane. Before you met him, you were floundering in debt, and the business was about to go under. It was my son's smarts and hard work that saved it from bankruptcy. So, actually, you're not needed at that place anymore. If anything, you're a liability that should leave to make the company better. Okay, what are you on about? Where on earth have you come up with this notion that my company was failing and that I couldn't handle it? Are you seriously telling me that Zane said all of that to you? Are you suggesting that my son is lying? He would never do that to me. Yes, he would because he has. My company and I were doing great long before I met Zane. And he hasn't done anything to grow the business. If anything, he's been more of a hindrance than a help. He's constantly getting in the way and interrupting important meetings. Half the time, I have to send him on a ridiculous errand just to keep him out of the way. The only reason I haven't fired him is because he's my husband. That's not true. My Zane is the smart one, and you're the one who gets in the way. 
He's even got an appointment with a Mr. Dolph to talk about setting up a new company, expanding on the one you've already made. He's what now? Yeah, he was telling me all about he and Mr. Dolph were going to make their own company off of the back of your one and take it international. They'll make millions. So you definitely won't be needed anymore. The only reason I allowed Zane to marry you and put up with such a horrible daughter-in-law for so long was because I knew that my son could do something amazing if he was just given the chance. And he's finally been given that chance. So let me get this straight. You're telling me that your son, my husband, is going to try and steal my idea and claim it as his own, taking it international and then shoving me out as the competition? Ha, <laughs> you're getting scared now, aren't you? It's a good thing for me though, because I'll be getting rid of you soon enough. Oh, how so? He's going to divorce you, duh. Then he'll find a nice, obedient wife who will stay home and look after the house and children like she should. I think I need to have a chat with Zane to see what's really going on here. Go ahead, but you won't be happy with what you discover. Hey, Zane, are you free to talk? Hey, sweetie. Of course I am for you. What's up? Your mom just messaged me claiming a whole bunch of crazy things, and I just wanted to see if any of it was true. What was she saying? She was saying that I'm a horrible wife because I didn't quit my job when we got married to stay home to cook and clean and stuff. She said that my business was basically failing until you came along, and that you were the one who saved it and got it earning loads of money. Which is obviously not true. Any of this rings a bell? I'm sorry, Samantha. My mom can just be completely over the top sometimes. Basically, she can act a little crazy. You're telling me. So none of those things are true then? You never said any of that and she just made it all up in her head? Well, maybe not entirely. What do you mean? I just wanted to make her proud of me. So I might have said that I was the one who basically got your company up and going, and that maybe you should sign the company over to me as your husband, and you should stay at home more to look after any children we have. You actually said all that? Yeah. But, but you've seen her. When her mind is set on something, there is no stopping her until she gets what she wants. She was bugging me so much about making a name for myself that I simply told her I saved your company to stop her from bugging me so much. How about instead of claiming that something is yours when it's very clearly not, you actually grow a spine and stand up for yourself. You're in your 30s, for God's sake. That's easy for you to say. She's not your mom. No, but she is my mother-in-law, which means I've got to deal with her as well. You know, that wasn't all she said to me. Want to know what else your mom told me? What did she tell you? Your mom told me that you and a Mr. Dolph were secretly taking all of my important data, company information, and trying to poach as many of my workers and clients as possible so that you could make your own company, which would be identical to mine, and take it international with the plan to bully me out of the business once you've established your company. She... she told you all of that? I told her that in confidence. There's no way that she should have said any of that to you. So, it's true then? You actually are doing all of that? My own husband is trying to snake my company, which I built from the ground up through difficult times and with people telling me that I couldn't do it because I am a woman? Oh, and your mom didn't even say half of that. She just told me that you were having meetings with Mr. Dolph about starting your own company. Wait, you mean you tricked me into admitting all of that? Yep. I honestly don't know why your mom thinks you're so smart. It's really not true. Oh, and by the way, you're not the only one who wants a divorce. My mom really doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut. If you had more of a spine, you tell her that to her face. But hey, it's worked out for me. I've got to learn that not only is my husband a horrible, scheming, conniving, backstabbing, even little toad, 
but I was able to save my company from being stolen out from under me. I'll definitely be putting safety measures in place now so that that doesn't happen. Be sure to thank your mom for me. She's helped me out a lot. You really think I'm just going to sign those divorce papers and let you get away without paying me a single penny? Think again. Half of whatever you own is also mine. That's the great thing about getting married. The couple has to share whatever they have if they ever get divorced. Obviously, I don't really have a lot, so I'm definitely the one getting the most out of this deal. Oh well, sucks for you. You know, usually that is the way things would have to go. You're right. I know, it's going to be a massive payday for me. I might not have been able to start up my own company, but having half of yours will be fine too. I'll even be able to get a wife that my mom will be happy with. However, that's not how things are going to go for you. Huh? You do remember that before we got married, I had you sign a prenup, don't you? What? Figures you wouldn't remember. Yeah, I had you sign that in the event of a divorce. You had no claim over my company or any of my assets or money. You're going to get absolutely nothing from me. Wait, you, you can't do that. This was my backup plan. If I can't have half of everything, then what am I going to do? I don't know, and I don't care. Oh, and if you hadn't already guessed, you're fired. Hang on a moment. L look, I think things have just gotten a little out of hand here. I think we all just need to calm down, sit back, and have a proper chat about everything. We don't want to make any hasty decisions now, do we? I mean, as husband and wife, we really should try and talk our differences out first, don't you think? No, I think I'm good, thanks. This has been enough talking for me. I found out everything I need to, and I finally see you for who you actually are, and I can't say I'm impressed at all. My attorney will send through the divorce papers. Once those are signed, you and your mom can get out of my life forever. Samantha, please wait! No. You've treated me horrible, and I deserve so much more. I'm not going to listen to you again. Have fun breaking all this news to your mom. I'm sure she'll be so impressed with you. That was sarcasm, by the way. Goodbye, Zane. After that conversation, I contacted my lawyers and had them send through the divorce papers, along with the prenup document that Zane had signed when we first got married. Because of that document, I didn't have to pay him anything in the divorce. I also decided to take him and his friend, Mr. Dolph, to court over their scheme to steal my company. They were both found guilty of copyright theft and were forced to pay a hefty fine. Zane's mom definitely wasn't impressed by the situation that she and her son had landed themselves in. But she wasn't my problem anymore, so I don't really care. Sometimes, You've got to cut the toxic people out of your life for good in order for it to be more fulfilling.